How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sundays, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern, Sundays with Andrew Zarian, and it is Friday, Fun Friday here on the show. And you know what that means, it's Fun Friday. So it's going to be your opportunity to get your voice heard after we go through all of this news today. There's not a ton of it, but there's stuff to talk about. So uh, we're going to get into it. And then, as noted, you get to tell us what you think. So text message line, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Text me anything you want at 4wonline at gmail.com. If you are paying some exorbitant fee to text, at 4wonline, threads, Instagram, and Cameo, at Brian Alvarez on Twitter, slash X, and we'll throw out the phone number later if we end up opening those phone lines. But tonight is SmackDown. And we've got a lot of stuff advertised for the show. Also got Rampage tonight. There's definitely stuff advertised for that show. And uh, then we'll talk about all of the news, including Tony Khan. Kind of talking about a new TV rights deal. SmackDown may be going to three hours. Horrific news. We've also got updates on Swerve Strickland, when he'll be back, and Miro, when he may not be back, and uh, the Dynamite ratings. Cash Wheeler talks about how he almost retired after the uh, firearm allegations against him. Uh, I believe it was uh, last year, a little over a year ago. So we'll tell you all of that and then take your feedback. So once again, the text message line, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Get those text messages in. Let's get this show on the road. Back in a moment with Mike Sempervivi, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Fun Friday here on the show. We're always having fun. Oh, yeah. Hey, did you see my shirt? No, what you got? What's that? Oh, for heaven's sake. The Shahela's flying. I got it I got it free with my VIP package cuz I'm a very gonna, important person. Just gonna see unlike you. you. That too. Yeah. Did you guys listen to After Dark last night? It's back. It is. It's all right. I talked nonstop for an hour and 18 minutes. I've had better shows. But it was fun. And uh we'll have guests starting next week, so check it out. If you're a subscriber on any of the platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, wrestlingobserver.com, video.f4wonline.com. It's all up there. It's old school, brother. Check it out. See if you like it. If you don't, don't listen to it anymore. If you do like it, keep listening. Go back in the archives, listen to old shows. Listen to Carl Stern's After Dark. There's yeah. a lot of stuff people have not discovered. I Look, I love just beating you senseless when you deserve it, but I listened to Art Bell. Not a lot, but I did listen to Art Bell. I listened to George Inouye. I listened to the guy that would be on weekends when George Norrie would, would be gone. There were a lot of those and I, guys. And let me tell you, most of those guys were terrible. In fact, almost all of those guys were terrible, and George Norrie was not great. And Art Bell was the master at that particular format and genre. Yes, he was. And you, believe it or not, you and Carl, because Carl should not be forgotten about in this either, but obviously you did a bulk of those shows you guys were really the spiritual successor to what Art Bell really was about. Wow. Well, I'll take that. But I'm not as good as Art Bell. I've actually gone back and I've been listening to old Art Bell shows, and oh my God, this guy. Oh, no. Yeah, you know Art something Bell. else. There was only one Art Bell. There was oh, only yeah. one Art Bell, one Larry King. There are guys who were, again, especially overnights, it took a special animal and Larry King had his particular version and his type of show, and then it was completely different listening to Art Bell, and there was truly, truly nothing like it. Well, you know, I'd be the king overnight if my kids didn't wake up at 7 a.m. Maybe in 13 years, I'll be the king of overnight then. The old. But for now, I'm to be the, ki the king of afternoon. And uh, well, Drive sometimes. time, Brian Alvarez. I always, I always, you know, every now and then people are like, man, Brian was in a bad mood on that Observer show on Wednesday. Why was he in such a bad... Well, maybe because the show started recording at 12.50 a.m. After Dave had been tweeting when he claimed he was getting ready. 
<laughs> but didn't A get to him? I woke up at 7 a.m. and started to show at 12.45 a.m. What do you expect? What do you want out of me? What do you think I am? You know, I, I actually no... should be. You know what I should be? I should be flattered that oh, people yeah? think this bloke can get up at 7 a.m., do his entire day, walk 10,000 steps on a broken leg, no matter what, and then at 12.45 a.m. start a show and get through it. He should be able to do that, no problem. Well, I appreciate it, everybody, but I'm human and I can't. I have no sympathy for you whatsoever. None. Get out because of here. Because when I was working overnight, I would be working overnight. I had a small child that I had to take care of as well. And you would just whine and complain and kvetch. And again, I'm being as careful as I can possibly yeah, be. Yeah, you better. Here. And you would whine and just completely lace me on the air if I wanted to take a day off or if I don't I remember to this at all because I got two hours of sleep that day so no no what it you was Mike no sympathy I was for me I was whatsoever. concerned that you were dead because no, half the time we do a show and you just wouldn't show up I thought you were oh, dead you didn't care I would I text you every time dead. are you alive every time and, I would text are you and, alive Yes. And what would you be really then most upset about after finding out if I was alive that you had to go ahead and talk for an hour as yeah. if you can't do that? And you, like That's you why said, I can do this. You could talk for 90 well, minutes. You want to straight. thank you for no showing the show so many times? I became yes. an expert on doing it alone on yes. no notice. Absolutely. You got to sharpen those, uh, you sharpen that skill there. That's what you're doing to me now here in the last Nonsense. couple of weeks. Nonsense. With AW head Tony Khan, well, he will not Fun confirm. Friday. A new Sorry. TV rights deal with WBD has been struck. He isn't shying away from confirming. He will confirm that they have a long-term future, but he won't confirm that they signed a new deal. Okay, brother, I got it. He did an extended interview with Busted Open, asked about the future, was asked about the uh, reporting by the Pucks, John Orand, about the $170 million annually. It could be announced as early as next week. He says, I know they have been reporting things, that are very interesting. There are a lot of... I love reading. I love <laughs> Tony reading <Khan. laughs> Tony Khan. You know what I should do? It is Fun Friday. <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. Hold on a second. Yes? Yeah, we're going to make this fun. So I'm going to take this. Oh, no. Don't do the old-timey mic. Not the old-timey mic. Okay, good. The old-timey mic is used for, for different things. This, this is better. Because <laughs> okay, this is a Tony Khan statement. So All I'm going right. to take this. And I'm going to have it read... By Google Translate. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Yeah, we're going to do... Uh, can I do English to English? How does this work? <clears throat> I forget how I used to do this. This was how we used to do the uh, the spoilers for Rampage, remember? Yes. Because people didn't want me to uh, reveal who won on Rampage by the way that I read the matches out. Because <laughs> that was a real problem. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. It's fun Friday, everybody. We've got nothing better to do. Yeah. All right, here we go. I have been reporting things that are very interesting. There are a lot of reports and rumors. I have not confirmed and Warner Brothers has not confirmed anything officially. I think we have a really exciting future there. I can say with 100% certainty, AEW and TBS and TNT are here to stay for a long time. So you can say that with 100% certainty. 100. But you can't say that the deal has been signed. No. That doesn't make any sense. Well... Anyway, the deal is signed. That was Shibata. Yeah, that was Shibata. Should have, should have announced that. So anyway, uh, they're staying. And uh, we'll find out more soon enough. I and like how we can always, like, lie. Or not lie. We can always say Shibata is going to be on the program. And we wouldn't be lying if we just ran through and had that every single time. Because it wouldn't be a lie, exactly. People wouldn't really know if, if he was here or not. WWE has made a few announcements for tonight's SmackDown. So at Bad Blood, Cody and Roman will team up against The Bloodline, which is Solo and Jacob Fatu, which I'm still quite surprised by. WWE has announced an angle with Rhodes and Reigns was filmed at Georgia Tech University. It says here that Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns met up at Georgia Tech last night. Reigns' alma mater in the heart of Rhodes' hometown of Atlanta. This will also be the site of their epic tag team showdown against Solo Sokoa and Jacob Fatu. At Bad Blood, SmackDown cameras were on hand to capture the intense conversation between two of the biggest stars. Two of the biggest stars? They are the two biggest stars. I, I, that's actually one of the rare times WWE has downplayed something. Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns are two of the biggest stars. 
Find out One what the, the unlikely that Rock got in his big contract when he came back. I guess he got so. All those yeah, special things. Even he if he's not too. there, he's the biggest star. Yeah. Find out what the unlikely tandem have to say to each other ahead of their battle against the Bloodline when their epic, epic meeting is shown in its entirety tonight. Eight seven central on SmackDown. Roman, what do you want to talk about? I hope it starts like that. <laughs> that would be I, awesome. I hope it doesn't. <laughs> You know, I, I disagreed with Dave because I was talking about how why don't we, you know, this is the first this is the first time ever that Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns, two of the biggest stars in WWE, yes. will be teaming up together. So why don't they just face the Tongans? Because Cody and Roman against anybody is going to do gigantic business. So why, you know, they've been very careful about keeping Jacob Fatu away from Roman Reigns particularly. Like, why are we starting with it? And he goes, ah, it's just a match. I was like, just a match? This is Cody and Roman teaming for the first time ever. That's big. Why waste a big match on that? The answer's in the middle. Let's we'll try it out. We'll see them in the ring with each other. We'll get familiar as if they're not, but they'll get familiar. We'll get a chance. We'll get a taste of it, and then the Tongans will run in and ruin it, and then that will lead to you know Survivor Series, and then from there, you know we're going to get what we're going to get. So I'm actually okay with it because again, it should be just enough of a taste. When again, you got so much stuff that could happen with this story here until the end of the year. I've actually got a, I've got something to say when we come back regarding this match. Then we'll get into the SmackDown review and have more fun here on Fun Friday, Observer Live. My God. What's up? If you listen to the Brian Vinny show yesterday, somebody on the board has in fact found a picture of a rainbow Tesla truck. No. God. It's Hanalei's birthday yesterday. If anybody has any cash you want to... Maybe I should do a GoFundMe. <laughs> was, <laughs> was that on its way to follow the University of Cal football team who was uh, taking its woke agenda across the new ACC uh, conference that they're in and trolling everybody? It I have like no idea what you're talking do. about. All I know is both of my children, for some <laughs> reason, find the Tesla truck to be... Like, they've used the word, so beautiful. Really? <laughs> what are you talking about? They're into angular things. It's I a freaking square piece of metal on wheels. <laughs> well, you couldn't have an uglier vehicle. Yeah. And then Hanalei's big thing was when I grow up, I'm going to get a Tesla truck and I'm going to paint it rainbow. I was like, good luck with that kid. Go to school. And golly, there it is. Mm-hmm. That monstrosity there. See, look at you. Just Always shooting down dreams and somebody else coming through it's to give the inspiration. It's not shooting down a dream. It's stupid looking. God, Tesla truck. It's like, <laughs> it's like a normal Tesla. They they designed them to like look like a normal car. It's like, but the truck, the truck is like, this is what the giant block of metal looks like before you make a car out of it. Well, let's just not worry about that stuff. Just take the big block of metal and put that thing in it and just, like, drive it off the lot. People will buy it for $100,000. Well, wasn't a, a whole big, wouldn't you think, a big feature of designing this thing was hey, we want people to go, hey, look at that. And it accomplished its goal, did it not? It's like the DeLorean. When it had the doors that would come up like this, it's like, well, where are you going to park? Where are you going? Yeah, you know another way to accomplish that goal of being is get a really old car that sucks and let it just like totally fall apart and rust and have the thing fall. People will recognize that car too. They'll be like, "Wow, look at that thing!" Yeah, that's a lot cheaper than paying a hundred thousand dollars for a Tesla truck. Remember the pin? You're paying a hundred thousand dollars. This bloke won't even paint it. Think about that. I'm going to give it to you unpainted, and it's going to have all sharp edges on it. It's like you you trip in the supermarket and you fall into your normal car. It's fine. You trip in the supermarket, you fall into that thing, you're going to be sliced in two. Anyway, oh, my point that. Uh-huh. my point that I wanted to make was, you know, this bloodline match. Do you realize they did something like this before? It's 2011. What the hell kind of transition is that? I take back everything I said about No, because I was nice talking here. about this before the break, but I got distracted during the break and had to mention the Tesla truck. So in 2011, they had an epic Mega Powers team up of John Cena and The Rock were going to be a tag team. And they were going to fight in a main event at Survivor Series, a big pay per view. 
Back when you actually had to pay big money for a pay-per-view, okay? So, did they find the hottest team in WWE to team up against? Did they find two other massive stars? No. It didn't freaking matter who the opponents were. People were paying to see The Rock and John Cena team up. So they faced The Miz and Truth. Remember that? The yes. Miz and Truth. And they did great business. Because it doesn't matter who the opponents are. So the point is, the first time that Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns team up, that should be against the Tongans. You beat those two blokes, the other two guys run in, uh, beat up, and then we got another matchup coming. Or that sets up war games. So anyway. Let yeah. me ask you a question here. I Go for it. Fun Friday, and I don't want to bring you down if this is going to be something that does You can't it, bring me down today. Randy Orton and Javon Evans. <laughs> How high are your hopes? Oh, extremely low. Wait, 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 why? Why? Don't you remember Randy Orton and Evan Bourne? Don't you remember Randy Orton and Kofi Kingston? That actually did something for those guys. And as you say actually, about AEW... Actually, hold on a second. Hold as on. You say, say those names AEW, again. Say those names again. Evan Bourne had a memorable match with Randy Okay, and, and how, did, how did he end up in the end? He ended up... Uh, doing nowhere. The shooting star press. Absolutely nowhere. Wait, what do you say about AEW all the time? You got to do something with the guys, right? And that... It's not, uh, rain, it's not... Wait, it wasn't Chris Jericho's fault that Action Andretti didn't get over. It was Tony Khan's, right? It well, was yeah, not that is Randy true. Orton's fault. If these guys don't get over, I know. the same thing comes here with Javon Evans. This match, I guarantee you, I almost guarantee you, and now I do guarantee you, is going to be really, really good. And Javon Evans is going to look great, and Orton's going to make him look fantastic, and he's going to do something spectacular at the end that will get him that spinning torneo into an RKO, and people are going to lose their minds, and he's going to be better off for it. Now, what they do from there. I guess that's to be determined, but the match itself, I bet, is going to be good. I don't expect the match to be bad. I don't know what they're going to do in that match, but I know he's going to be RKO'd doing something bouncy. I know that's going to happen. And then if he's in the mid-card, not getting an entrance on television, teaming with Cedric Alexander the next week, well, brother, what did you accomplish? You know how long it took Kobe to actually get over after that Randy Orton? That match was like in 2008. Well, and he was just another tag team guy after. Look, it was a great match and everything. Yeah, but you know, that's what it's not I'm like all of a sudden he was on. going for the world title. But it's fun Friday, and you got to think of the positives. It's, it's about putting a positive spin on. No, the problem is if Friday. I think of the positives, I'm going to think Javon should pin Randy Orton, like he probably should have pinned uh, what's his name if he hadn't been champion, but uh, he didn't, and he won't. Now. The rest of SmackDown tonight has L.A. Knight versus Andrade, Bailey and Naomi versus Nia and Tiffany, footage of the Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns, Georgia Tech angle, and Apollo Crews faces Giovanni Vinci. Now, I'm not happy about that one. Miro has asked for his release. <laughs> Give well, it to we him. found him. Let's Give it to yeah, him. really. Let's go. You know what? If I were Miro, it's like, I, I, why, why bother, dude? You know how much money that guy's making to just do nothing in another country? Just take your money, dude. Eh, hope yeah, hope they add time. I hope they don't. Just cut ties, be done with it, let it go, and let it be that. Now we can stop asking, where is Miro? We can go back to asking, where is Keith Lee? Well, Keith Lee was injured, so it's possible he's not going to be Where is he? Well, he's injured, so he's at his house in Texas. How you want me to get the address he? for you or what? But I thought Britt Baker was injured, but she wasn't injured. She just wasn't being used. Well, she's that was also it. not so being is used Lee? now. Nor is, is Daniel Lee Garcia. Nor, nor are, like, uh, Tony Storm. Nor is Mercedes Monet. Nor is, I mean, I could go on and on. So you're saying Keith Lee is healthy? No, he's injured. Okay. He's actually injured. He had knee surgery. It wasn't right. that long ago, so I'm sure it's going to be a while. Okay. Dynamite, 687,000 viewers. 0.22, no major sports competition. So this looks like it's going to be, you know, this is this is like that, the number of people that are watching on a on a non competition week. And uh, I mean, no competition this week, but year over year down thirty percent and down thirty nine percent in eighteen to forty nine. So they've had a real big decline over the last year in viewership. But um, you know. Still doing well on on the cable rankings. Although, like I said a few days ago, all right, you got your new deal now, okay? So to me, 
That's all well and good that you're doing well on the cable rankings, but it doesn't freaking matter for three more years. Now it should be about how can we get more human beings, eyeballs, actually watching this show. And uh, they need to do that. 18 to 49 is important in a contract year. And I'm sure it's important. You know, it's nice to be number one on cable or number three or whatever. But where's where are all the viewers at? Let's get them back. Now we should shoot for that million. Then in three years, we can go back to 18 to 49 again. Just like WWE. It's like the most amazing story. When they were at, they were just dying. They were dying. Like double-digit declines year over year. It was absolutely horrible. It was like this place is collapsing. And then all of a sudden, it was contract year, and everything went up year over year. And then they got like a really good deal. It's like, how did they do that? How did they do that? It's like athletes. The exact contract opposite years. is happening with Dynamite. It's a contract year, and they're down double digits year over year. You know what WWE had for years and years and years, too, was that relationship with NBC. You know, it, it's been, it was so incredibly strong, and I'm brain-locking on the executive's name right now for God knows what reason, but it was such a incredible partnership and when she grew to be president of nbc you talking about bonnie hammer bonnie hammer thank you there there has been no You're greater welcome. friend in the history of pro wrestling to a promotion as bonnie hammer was and obviously tony khan wants that with david zaslov although david zaslov's in a much more precarious position because he's got much more power than bonnie hammer ever had but with that said with bonnie hammer being a cog in the machine and an important one for NBC Universal, there was no shot she was going to go anywhere other by her, you know, than her own devices of wanting to leave with Zaslov. That could change if things go down and things go poorly. And he's already looked at as a guy who maybe some stockholders love him, but a lot of people absolutely hate him and are praying for his demise and are waiting for it to happen to jump at him. So. Tony Khan trying to expand out and getting more programming, and they don't need it. Believe me, they don't need it. But him trying to actually reach out to other partners is probably one of the smarter things he could be doing right now. And I still think if there was any truth to the rumor that something could have been done with he and the CW, that they absolutely blew that with what CW wants to seemingly accomplish with their network. All right, if you want to, give us a call. I'm opening up the phone lines. 1-800-878-PLAY. 1-800-878-7529. Once again, that's 1-800-878-PLAY. If you have a phone that doesn't have the numbers because you're like in 2024, 1-800-878-7529. Putting Dom to work. Back in a minute, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. All right, well, it's Fun Friday, so you can text us or give us a call. Text message line 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. And you can give us a call, 1-800-878-PLAY, 1-800-878-7529. Ben here says, I'm a longtime listener from the UK, first-time texter. I've sent an email. I don't know if it works from the UK. In your opinion, when did AW start losing momentum? For me, it's when Tony bought ROH, which saturated the roster and the belts. I know everyone likes to blame Ring of Honor, but I don't think it was Ring of Honor. There, there are two things that I think really started all of this. And the first one was Brawl Out. And, you know, for people that knew what was going on inside, I think Brawl Out really disillusioned them in a lot of ways. And for people that maybe didn't know what was going on, you uh, had a situation where a bunch of people just vanished. Punk vanished. Young Bucks vanished. Kenny Omega vanished. We, we were never told anything as viewers. So there was, there was that. There was the other big issue. And I don't know what day this is, okay? I can't tell you what day this happened. But I do know that there was a day where... Tony Khan started telling people there's no such thing as long-term booking anymore. It's week to week. And when I heard that, I was like, what? He didn't, he didn't really say that. But if you watch the shows, that's what happened. I think those two were big. And I think obviously the biggest issue was that Vince got ousted. Triple H took over. 
did a significantly better job. The show stopped sucking. And a lot of people that have been disillusioned by WWE and chose AEW for reasons. Some of the reasons I mentioned, and everyone has their own individual reasons, they, they, uh, they decided to start watching WWE again. So those are the three things that I think has, uh, have been the biggest issues. I think the biggest thing was just the crossroads of literally a crossroads too because it was Cody Rhodes going out as CM Punk was coming in but Vince going out at a time where AEW was quite messy and a lot of the negatives that a lot of people were complaining about ended up being on display there were not a whole lot of likable figures even though people rallied behind one side or the other for a lot of people that were in the middle Everybody came across as incredibly unlikable. And when things aren't humming for you from a creative point of view, it turned a lot of people off. And at the flip, Vince McMahon was gone. And that was what a lot of people wanted, at least the first time around. And Vince was going to go away and people were hoping the old regime would go. And ultimately, they did end up going. Had to go through a lot of strife to get to that point. But at the end of the day, I think there were a lot of people that stuck in with AEW after a couple of years because they wanted something different and then realized they don't want anything different. They're going to watch one thing, and that thing is going to be WWE that they treat like, I've said this before, like UFC, like the NFL, like Kleenex. You know, when people say, here's a tissue, that's what they think of. And that's exactly the way it is with, with WWE and a lot of wrestling fans. This person here says, what will happen to WOW when NXT premieres on the CW October 1st? And there's another channel or streaming service I can watch WOW on. I don't think WOW's going anywhere. No, I don't think bad. WWE has an exclusive. Exclusives were things that Vince demanded back in the day. And Vince is gone. And after the whole deal with um, MLW and, you know, UFC, the UFC lawsuit. And, I mean, they, they ain't asking for, they don't care if WOW's on that CW. They, they no, are, I mean, I mean, they may care, but they ain't do anything about it. It'll continue to air. No, NWA power is going to remain on the app. You know, that that's going to be on the CW app still. And, you know, with WOW, I think it's just a matter of how long Genie Bus wants to go ahead and produce the thing and pay for it and get it out there. Because for CW, it's just really easy, cheap programming that they can smack on really at any time. This person says, I hope Miro's back problem gets fixed. I heard he can't lie down for longer than two seconds. Well, that is uh, that is one of the big problems. When you refuse to do jobs, when it doesn't work for you, brother, how do you book a guy? So uh, Tony's solution was just don't book him, as opposed to saying, brother, do the job or you're in breach of contract. And uh, I guess he didn't want to risk. I don't so know. Do you want to waste, didn't waste the legal him? resources on that one? This person here says, a Rusev Day return? Well, I'm sure Rusev wants that. Question is whether WWE wants that. I think they've got they got plenty of uh, big stars. Yeah. Maybe they'd they take him back. Maybe they him. wouldn't. Yeah, they could. I mean, may, one shot at the Royal Rumble even, you know, if he wants to wait that long. And you can try to do something that way. Oh, boy. Got Carlito in, right? Isn't that how he came back? This person said, would the Dynamite ratings be better if they did not have an overrun? <laughs> we getting into this again? It's actually a complicated question. I'll keep it simple, okay? Somebody went back and they sent Dave and I all of the overrun numbers from the past year or so. And the overrun on Dynamite regularly loses viewers, and the overrun at NXT regularly gains viewers. And so Dave, and he actually did it on the board the other day as well. He said, Dynamite only loses viewership in the overrun 25% of the time. And I was like, what are you talking about? You got the same email I did, 25%? Then I figured out that he is concentrating on 18 to 49. He's not looking at the entire viewership. Now, the issue with the overrun is not exclusive to people 18 to 49. Like, it affects me now, but when I turn 50, it's still going to affect me. That's why his so, argument was ridiculous. You have to look at the entire viewership. What does the entire viewership do at 10 o'clock? On NXT, it always goes up. Virtually every single time it goes up. And on Dynamite, that includes this week as well, virtually every single time it goes down. 
Now, it could be, I, I'd have to go back because I wasn't looking at the overrun, but it's possible that 75% of the time the overrun does go up, okay? So the answer to this is, if the overrun goes up in 18 to 49, and the overrun goes down in total viewership, then the answer to your question is, the overrun helps in 18 to 49, and it hurts in total viewership. Now, given this was a contract year, and the 18 to 49 is the most important number, then... Well, that's good for AEW, but it is running off total viewers every single week because the show cuts off for them. It should be remedied. The whole but they point won't. of the overrun was to get a little advantage on the other guy and go over to the top of the hour and spike something at the end and then often get your highest rating of the night and bring up the rest of the night's rating and dave is right yes it was 18 to 49 i can't believe it took you that long to figure that that's what he was talking about but your point not only remains but also oftentimes when you look at that number ticking up the 18 to 49 number has varied throughout the night and it's actually even though it's going up it's not like it's going up from such a high point it's not like it's the highest point of the 18 to 49 portion of the night so it's like again when you lose so many viewers throughout the night but then you can go okay we went up a little bit again you go up 2000 viewers great well if you've lost 20,000 throughout the night in that same demo who cares that you went up in the overrun? So, I don't know. It's one of those things where everybody's got an excuse as to why it matters or why it doesn't matter. But at the end of the day is they're at one of their lowest points that they've ever been at. In fact, at the lowest point they've ever been at for a lot of all three of their shows. Now, let me also transition into saying this. The idea of SmackDown being three hours absolutely hurts my feelings. Because that could lead to Raw, Dynamite, and SmackDown all being three hours. And if that happens, I'm not watching anything else of any of these other shows. Well, I will say that Dave in the Observer noted that at this point, nothing is certain in terms of how long the shows are going to be come January. So I'm not going to worry about it right now. And you know, the other thing is, um, honestly, like I don't like SmackDown at three hours, but... It doesn't bother no me that it stinks. It doesn't bother me. I'm gonna tell you why, okay? Because you WWE forward button. WWE has more sponsors than AEW does, okay? So as a result, WWE commercial breaks are longer. A WWE commercial break is about four minutes long. An AEW commercial break is about three minutes long, okay? On top of that. AW does not like doing replays, video packages, recaps. WWE loves to do that, all right? So, if I skip all of the replays of what I've already seen, and I skip all of the commercials, I can watch a three-hour WWE show in 90 minutes. Now, because of the way that AW has their commercials and their lack of video packages, it takes me 90 minutes to watch Dynamite. So... I mean, it's cool if the show is two hours because I can get a, I can get an entire SmackDown watch in an hour and miss nothing because it's two hours. Well, but I can I can survive ninety minutes of SmackDown and ninety minutes of Raw. I prefer a, it was two hours, but I can I can handle it. Big advantage that WWE has over AEW, and AEW cannot do what WWE does, which is essentially, even though they have their cable partners essentially give away their show through clips on YouTube on their website WWE.com. That's if you just watch WWE.com's highlights of what took place on Raw and SmackDown and NXT, maybe it's com combined even when they include full matches like a half hour long. Like you can get away with doing that, keep up and have no problems. AEW is not exactly in that position because they really need you to tune in. But let's say they get rid of Rampage and they make Dynamite a three hour show. They ought to consider really trying to figure out a way to kind of blend the difference in there because there are going to be a lot of people that miss Collision or aren't going to watch three straight hours of Dynamite. So how can you fill them in? I think they need to do a better job trying to do that. Bert says, I love it when the guys have entrances and they have a commercial break and the rest starts to hang out in the ring and do nothing for five minutes. Listen, I don't know if this is universal now, 
But I went to the SmackDown USA Network debut. That did not happen one time. They didn't do that one time. That show just felt like we were watching a two-hour show, and there were no awkward moments during a commercial break where they just turned the lights off and played some stupid video. They used to do that all the time. They did not do that for this show. Now, we got a special caller. Yes, Lenny. Hello, Brian. Hello, chat. Hello, people. Mike's here, too. Hello, Mike. I didn't forget you. Okay, what's up? So let me just start this off by saying no wrestling TV show should be three hours in the year of 2024. Not WWE, not AEW. No. What are you going to uh, say when AEW goes to three hours, Lenny? Lenny what are you going right. to say when, when, when Dynamite becomes a three-hour show? I'm going to say the same exact thing that I that I just said. Okay. No wrestling promotion should have a three-hour show. My God, we agree on something. He's right. He's right. I don't want it for AEW. I lived through it with WCW, and you're just stretching yourself thin creatively when you have three hours to fill. And mind you, AEW, from a bell-to-bell standpoint, is absolutely crushing it right now. Three hours is a touch much. And I'm hoping it doesn't go that way. I'm praying it doesn't go that way. But, yeah. Um, Jared, the other add one I'll to the Lenny is right counter for me, please. Go ahead, Lenny. It's John today. The other thing I wanted to call, I, I want to just point out, because um, I heard you mention this a few days ago, and I'm not sure if, I, I guess AEW wasn't obvious enough about it, but um, with the Nigel McGinnis Brian Danielson match, so they actually aired a best of Nigel McGinnis playlist from his ROH days to kind of get folks up to speed on who he is. Go quick, we got to go to a break. Know. But the match is the match is happening. They're well, of course, the match, match is happening. Thank you, Lenny. We got to head to a break here. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Yes, I know the match is happening. The people listening to this know the match is happening, I think. But I don't know. Because the fact of the matter is, in the one week between last week's Dynamite and this week's Dynamite, in the one week since they announced that match might take place, they sold 710 tickets to Arthur Ashe. 710. In seven days. They averaged 102 tickets a day. 102 tickets a day for seven days. Okay? Okay. So what that tells me is you should have announced the match is actually happening because that tells me that this maybe it will, maybe it won't is ineffective at selling tickets or people just don't care about the match. I like to think people care about the match. So them not announcing this on the go home show for Arthur Ashe was just astounding to me, but that's what they did. Can I got, I, yes. Can I say something that might be unpopular here? Cause I remember Nigel McGuinness and, Samoa Joe and Brian Danielson and all those guys going at it. That was a long time ago, and a lot of people didn't see that. They didn't collect DVDs. They have no idea. And they know Nigel is this great wrestler reputed to be, and they may have seen highlights, but that's not something that you can really hang your hat on. Well, we had a text message here about uh, TNA events and if they've uh, gone up anything and have ratings, buy rates improved as well. Yes, buy rates are up. Attendance is up. Ratings are not up at all, but subscriptions to their service are also up. So the NXT AW deal has helped. Or NXT uh, TNA has helped TNA a lot. We're out of time, everybody. It was a fun Friday. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.